Hey beautiful family. So a few weeks ago Fritzy felt unwell and then she lost her sense of smell and then she started coughing a lot. So she was tested here in Germany and tested positive for COVID and we were quarantined inside our family home. The boys got sick with fever. I got a little sick and then felt better and I was so happy. But then somehow I got dramatically sick and I had a really intense high fever for over a week and I'm still coughing a little bit now but it seems that we have this virus behind us and that's what's important. So if it's been a little quiet you know why. It's been quite intense being on top of each other and actually I just didn't have any inner space from what was going on. Having a virus in your body that's quite new I've never felt or experienced a sickness like this in my life. It was very peculiar. A lot of psychological side to it, as in uh, giving you a lot of brain fog and memory problems, etc. It was very peculiar. This could just be an individual uh, occurrence because of my autoimmune stuff, of course. But what I recognized from this little, this lesson from quarantine and COVID is what I want to call it. I during this period started to feel a sense of anxiety and this is not like me I'm good with anxiety because I like to lay it all down at the feet of somebody else and this takes away your anxieties and I'm not the first to teach this or to say it or realize this because it was taught by Jesus Christ it was taught by uh, various different yogis and saints and so on and mystics and Buddha taught it you can just find that stillness, that presence in life where that's not there. And what I can see is because of the life that I live, because of the way that we live our life, it's a very unnatural response to things. When you have a lot of sick children and you say, I'm going to take responsibility for them with an organization that I'm going to start. That there is not natural to many of us because we have doubts, we have a mind and you say can I afford it, can I do that, you know, will, will, people do, will people keep helping us, will we have enough to pay the bills, what happens if we don't have enough to pay the bills, what happens if... And these anxieties come, they're very normal natural anxieties but what I see them is my mind attacking me because your mind has a fight or flight survival mode which we all need. We all require it or we wouldn't be here today. Our ancestors needed that to survive. But, and to find food, etc, etc. But in the position we're in today, that is a negative attack on me when that happens. And the reason that it was happening, I had space, the boys going to bed at six o'clock, I had space at night to sit still in peace and quiet. But what I wasn't doing is finding my inner space. And... I've had this experience in life, in consciousness, that many have. People have used psychedelics, fasting, that's just happened randomly due to, just some, due to trauma, whatever. And this space in consciousness I've labelled God. And this presence of God, this vibrational state of love that I have felt and witnessed in my life, I have tried to bring that to the world. I have tried to bring that state of consciousness into everyday life to people and say, hey, I've touched this thing. And the place where I touched it was the light of silence, I will call it. It's a space where I've called silence, but it is a, an internal chasm that opens up within me when I'm in depths of meditation, etc. And, and this presence, this truth comes in when I'm there. And if I don't make space for that opening, for that light of silence, to sit in that light of silence, to find that internal stillness, so as I can feel that presence washing over me. So as I can feel that high vibrational presence of love coming in. Then I start thinking and trying to do it with my own steam. And off the back of that comes the anxiety. Because you start trying to do it with this part of you that can't do it. This part of you that cannot do that. You're, that part of you, the fight or flight response, the problem solving mind. It can't walk by faith and not sight. It's very naturous to walk by sight. It's very naturous to walk with time. And this is where the serendipity, the synchronicity of God often disappears in the world. is because people interfere with God's synchronicities by involving their thought, 
they think I can do this better. They rely on themselves and they don't rely on that trust. And I do this so much that I just did it again during this period, but I was unwell and the family was unwell and so on. But now I'm starting to feel better. I make space to sit in that light of silence. Any anxieties I had, any concerns I had, any worries I had, they just start to fade and melt away. And I can watch my mind as I sit there attacking me. Oh, but what about this? But what about that? And I can just sit now and observe it and say, no, I'm not going to play that game with you, mind, because we know it's going to work out. We have a higher faith than that. I love you. I know you're trying to protect us and you're trying to protect the kids even, but just relax. And this is how it is. This is the two different states of being that we can live within. And in that other state, the light of silence, it's where the synchronicity and serendipity happens. It's where we, as Jesus said, I did not come to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. It's in that state where you find the will of the one who sent all of us. It's in that state where you find this different way of life. And it's not about leaning on your own steam and your own intellect and your own discernment. Those tools are needed in life. They're beautiful. But when it comes to doing something like what I'm doing with my life and what the charity is doing with its life, we have to have persons within there who don't fall into that trap. Because otherwise it gets analytical. And instead of acting from love, we start to pause. And we would say, we can't take in that many homeless children. We can't take in this many children. We can't do this. We can't take in another sick child when we are struggling as it is. We can't rescue another dog when we are struggling as it is. And when we do that, we create a great travesty. Because what we do is we join the other side of humanity who walk by sight and not by faith. We leave the supernatural and we enter the very natural state of being. And I just did it again. And it wasn't that I wasn't sitting in the quiet. It wasn't that I wasn't sitting still and peaceful. It's that I wasn't getting it inside. It's that I wasn't in the light of silence internally so I couldn't feel the presence. And when you feel the presence, when the direct experience of the presence is so profoundly overwhelming on the knife edge of the present moment, then all of those human worries and carnalities, they fade. They have no choice but to fade because that presence overpowers them and says, I'm here. You might not see me with your carnal mind. You might not see me with your lateral and intellectual mind, but I am here. And look at all I've done and know all I will do. God bless, guys. <laughs> Hi everyone, you may recall this beautiful angel, Halima, who became homeless after being evacuated from the temporary shelter. Halima requires full-time care and attention making it extremely hard for her mother to work and provide her basic needs. Thanks to your love and support, we can see change. Wow. 
Alima and her mother are happy. They have a place to live. Her mother has started a small business at home to cater for their basic needs. <laughs> Thank you for your love and support, as we always believe that sharing can and does change lives.